So we're at the opening day of Design Miami, and um, there is some incredible shows, galleries that are showing work from Jean Prouvé and uh, Le Corbusier and Charles Eames, etc. Um, further down in the exhibit. But this is my little show, my little contribution, um, since uh, I was invited here to show um, a different, but I think very similar aspect of design. The reason why I built um, this particular show is because I was thinking about the work that Le Corbusier, the work that Jean Prouvé have done, always trying to improve the world with the tools of an architect or designer to be more efficient and building their projects in places like the developing world, Africa, uh, in places where they could, you know, India, where they could provide uh, apartment buildings and institutions, for example, to an entire city. Um, and so what I was thinking about is what is, what are the artifacts of tomorrow? What are the artifacts of the intentions of designers who want to contribute to the world are going to be uh, 50 years, 100 years from now? So here specifically, out of the practice of design that um, I have, we're focusing on social, humanitarian, and environmental projects. So everything from the One Laptop Per Child to the eyeglass program we're doing in Mexico, Verbien, um, to the Puma Clever Little Bag, and the work we do with Herman Miller, which um, is about affordable furniture, but also low carbon footprint and a cradle cradle to cradle mentality. So it's um, this is what we're doing today, but hopefully it will be looked upon um, in similar ways um, that uh, some of the you know great historical works that are presented at the Design Miami Fair are going to be looked at in the future. When we start on a project, the most important thing for us is the idea, the big idea. Um, I think design really is an incredible practice if, if you can attach it to what is going on in the world today and if you can feel that it can contribute to, to the world moving forward. My motto is that design accelerates the adoption of new ideas. So we try to identify what are these big, the big 21st century ideas that, are, that we need to contribute to, whether it's sustainability, whether it's the approachability and ease of use of technology, whether it's how um, we can bridge the gap um, in a cultural sense and in a humanitarian sense um, with, uh, through technology and other means in the developing world. So, um, you know, the big idea is what drives my team in San Francisco and New York to, um, to uh, at the beginning of a project, you know, that's really where, where we start um, in, uh, and where we uh, set up the foundation for our projects. The process of design is also what we're sharing here today um, through the uh, presentation of prototypes, of drawings, of uh, mock-ups and um, uh, experiments um, is, is essentially what, what we do. So we draw by hand, we build by hand, we explore many different solutions around that big idea. Um, and I wanted to present the process by which those artifacts are being built, um, as well as the final result. So the final result, of course, is always driven by the human experience. Um, and while you know technology often concerns itself with speed and um, and performance, we designers um, concern ourselves with the human experience. So all of this work 
ends up in this context, which are the images we're showing on the walls um, of the product in use in many different places, many different environments, and in many different cultural, um, uh, cultural contexts. I see the future of design as tremendously important in the coming in the coming few years because we're moving technology is now affecting you know every aspect of our lives um, and technology is moving onto our bodies where it will be able to tell us more at first about our lifestyles but over the coming years about our health it's moving in our home environments where we can better control our environments and also focus on the things that are important away from screens, away from technology and more living in the moment. But we still like control and information. So it's important to, for us designers to, uh, to design um, with that in mind. And then design is moving more into our environment as well. Whereas through, whether it's electrical, electric cars, whether it's uh, self-driving cars, um, whether it's uh, shared uh, vehicles, um, technology is really enabling us to design differently, to design for transportation that isn't as um, carbon heavy on the planet. And um, so in every aspect, I think, we're, we're in a place where design is, going, is, is making a very big difference in the way that the, the products and the experience we have today are transitioning to um, more efficient, but I also believe more pleasant, uh, more connected ways to live. Um, and I mean connectedness in a sense of not just being stuck in our devices, which is the problem we have today, but it rather connected to others and connected to, to, um, to what's, what's around us, the important things in our lives. And as designers, we essentially have to move forward and um, designed less for the traditional interface between technology and the human, which has been the screen, and more towards intuitive uh, ways to, to, to bring the information to us. So we get less stuck into our screens and go into what I call 2.0 of human interface interaction, which um, is going to be much more natural. I, I call that the invisible interface, but um, it's going, to be, it's going to be more about using our five senses to understand, control, and consume information um, uh, around us. There are many ways that we're experimenting with what I call the invisible interface. August, for example, the August Smart Lock and the range of products that we've built actually allows you to control your home uh, often you know, without the need of pressing a button or putting a key in your door or looking even at your screen because we have features like auto unlock or auto relock behind you which essentially are showing you a way to um, interface with your home and access to your home in ways that don't require physical or digital in, uh, interactions and so more and more we're, we're trying to build other types of signals vibration noise um, to make sure that people around these objects, the IOTs that are moving into our home, um, know that the system is responding to you and yet it, it isn't taking you away into, um, into a screen.